Here's an interesting question from a viewer. If I accidentally discharge a firearm in my home, will the police show up? And if so, am I obliged to answer the door? So this is the kind of ammo it shoots, 12 gauge. Uh, this is a 12 gauge bird shot. Also, this weapon has uh, this cool feature where you press the trigger down, you can, and once you press this down and pull it up. Well, before I answer this question, quick reminder, we have a gun giveaway going on right now. You can enter for free, but it ends really soon. So click the link in the description down below to reveal which brand new gun you could win. Now, let's get into this discussion if there's an accidental discharge. First of all, I wanna make it clear. I don't call them accidental discharges, I call them negligent discharges because you have to do a very specific series of things to make your gun fire. It doesn't just happen. Guns don't just go off, you make them fire. So let's call this a negligent discharge. All right, negligent discharge is defined as the discharge of a firearm caused by unintentional inattentiveness or carelessness. That's what happens when your gun goes off when you don't intend it to. Some people argue that any discharge that isn't intentional is negligent, and there's something to be said for that. So, you are responsible for what happens with your gun, whether you intended to do it or not. As a result, it's your responsibility to take the utmost care while handling, carrying, or shooting your firearm to ensure that those around you and you are safe. Some of the most common unintentional discharges is usually when you put a pistol into your pocket without a holster. So if you unintentionally discharge a firearm in your home, will the police show up? Well, that depends. The second part of this is, do I have to answer the door? And you can pretty much bet you're gonna have to answer the door. So let's talk about that depends part. If you have a negligent or unintentional discharge of a firearm in your home, will the police show up? That depends if anybody heard it and called the police. I will share that I had a negligent discharge in my home in rural South Dakota, long time ago, in the early 90s. Put a round through my mattress into the floor. The police didn't show up because nobody heard it. My closest neighbor was two miles away and the gun discharged inside the house. It was completely negligent. I was doing something I wasn't supposed to be doing with the gun, lowering the hammer on a firearm with a round in the chamber. I should have just left it cocked and locked, but that's neither here nor there. I learned my lesson. Let's talk about this. Will the police arrive? In an urban setting, if there's a gunshot or a suburban setting, somebody hears a gunshot from inside your house and they call the police, you can bet everything you have that the police are going to arrive. I don't know when, but they're going to come and they're going to investigate that sound of gunfire from your home. Now, do I have to answer the door? That becomes a very important question. Police can't go into your house without a search warrant unless there's something called exigent circumstances. That means they believe something really serious is going on that gives them the right to go in there and they have to go check on the safety of the people inside. And understand, the sound of gunfire, they're going to utilize that as exigent circumstances. They're going to go in there and try to find out what happened if a gun went off, if a gun was fired inside that house. Yeah, um, if somebody reports that there's gunshots or a gunshot from your house, one, police will arrive, and two, you can probably count on them going inside that house. There are gonna be people who argue with me and say they're not gonna let them in and uh, the police have no right to come and search, but I think when the police get there, if there's sound or report of gunfire, they're gonna go in that house and they're gonna make sure that everybody is okay and they're gonna to try to find out what happened. And I'm guessing that the prosecutor, that all of their supervisors are gonna back them up for making entry into that house. So let's share a few tips on how to make sure that you don't have a negligent discharge or an unintentional discharge of your firearm. First and foremost, most of these negligent unintentional discharge happen during what we call administrative handling. That means when you're doing something that is not fighting with your firearm. Typically, if you're in a gunfight, you grab that gun, you are intentionally making it fire because you're trying to defend yourself. Or if you're on a training scenario, if you're out on the range and you're training, you are intentionally making that gun fire. You're not administratively handling that gun. So if you want to avoid a negligent or unintentional discharge, make sure that you are extra careful during the administrative type handling. And if you're going to be doing dry fire training, Make sure that you do that dry fire training with no live ammo in the room. Not just in the gun, 
Don't just empty the gun and make sure it's clear. Move that ammo outside of the room because that's physical steps and actions that you take to make sure there's no live ammo in the room where you're doing your dry fire training. And you can use dummy rounds and make sure that you check for clear, triple check before you're touching the trigger. We have dummy rounds in packages. There's either all plastic, there's metal with a plastic front end. You can make up dummy rounds, which are actual components of your ammunition with no primer inside. Make sure there's no primer in there and then that gun can never go off. So those are the elements that you really wanna focus on. Now, number two, like I said before, avoid excessive handling. Don't touch your gun unless you have a reason to do so. Look at it this way. The more you handle your gun, the more chances that something will go wrong and you will make that gun fire. It's the same with car accidents. The more time you drive, the more chance you have to get into a car accident. But again, we're looking at this administrative handling when you're messing around with your gun, when you're not actually training or you're not actually involved in a gunfight or a defensive action. Don't pull your gun out of the holster and show it to a friend and be messing around with it. Maintain trigger finger discipline at all times. That gun is emergency life-saving material. It's an emergency life-saving tool and that's when you should be handling it in an emergency or when you're training for an emergency. So load up your gun, put around in the chamber, engage all of the safeties, put that gun on your hip and leave it alone until you are in a situation that requires you to take that gun out. A gun in the holster is always a safe gun. Want to know the three biggest mistakes when carrying a handgun? Then click on the video next to me to reveal all three mistakes. Mistake number two may shock you. Everybody has their own cardinal rules for what they're gonna do when they're carrying a gun, but right now I'm gonna give you three things that you must never do 